Hi guys, welcome, welcome back. We'll be going book shopping today, but wait for it. Hold your horses. Barnes & Noble is having a 50% off all hardcover sale. Barnes & Noble is out for my Christmas money, but under these circumstances, I'm not mad about it. They rarely do the sale, so I am, let's just say, ecstatic. You can probably tell. <laughs> Since their last 50% off hardcover sale, I've definitely evolved as a reader, so it's a bit dangerous because I will want to buy more books. So yeah, we'll be going to Barnes & Noble. I may actually be filming this intro like a week or so after I already went to Barnes & Noble, but after that, of course, we're gonna come back and I'm gonna show y'all what I end up picking up. All right, I won't keep you guys any longer. I will see you guys soon. I'm literally so excited. I was about to say, you guys don't know how excited I am, except of course you guys know how excited I am. You're my book loving besties. There's the beauty, festive as ever. I have a lot of books on my radar that I'm hoping to find. Hopefully I'm lucky. This is gonna be like my Christmas present to myself. <gasps> I forgot my Barnes & Noble gift card. I got a Barnes & Noble gift card for Christmas, of course. I forgot it. It's okay, I'll use it another time. I'll, I'll use it another time. I'm all caffeinated up. I'm already on my second cup of coffee. Is it too early for a second cup of coffee? Definitely. I can see the workers like inside, like they're preparing, they're getting ready for me. I literally woke up at 5 a.m. to see if the sale was going on because I knew last year that they did 50% off all hardcovers the day after Christmas. I didn't even like plan, like I did plan to check, but I didn't set an alarm or anything to wake up at 5 a.m. I just put a lot of faith in my subconscious to just naturally wake me up. I've got a friend now. Lovely. Okay, I will see you guys in the store when it opens in approximately 14 minutes. I did not factor that I would have to be sitting in my car in like 30 degree weather <laughs> for, it's not even that long, but my car is like freezing cold already. <laughs> Can you like tell I've already had like too much caffeine today? How do I pass the time? 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 I want you to know how I feel. Ghost literally just pushed this book off the shelf. <laughs> on my way to my second Barnes & Noble of the day. I really need to go to the bathroom, but mind over matter. I could have parked closer, but I always park in the same spot whenever I go to a certain plaza or place. to go to the gym when you can just lift books. <laughs> I'm not even exaggerating when I say I have a haul here today. Like, look at this. Who allowed me to do this? <laughs> I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen books. <laughs> okay, it's fine. It's fine. My bacon count is definitely crying, but I'm happy. <laughs> I did end up buying books at both Barnes and Nobles, and then the other day I actually went back to Barnes and Noble <laughs> with one of my friends, and I bought a few books then as well. But I did use my gift card that time. I remembered it this time. So those books were practically free for me at least. You bet I was the first one in Barnes and Noble. The lady opened the door, I sprinted. I Usain bolted to that door. I did spend about an hour and a half just browsing about. I wanted to make sure I covered the whole store and left no stone or in this case book unturned. And I mean literally unturned. I spent like half the time just reading synopses of books. Snop, snopsi? 
Synopsis? Look, I'm not an English major, so it doesn't matter. Okay, let's get into the haul. The very first book I picked up, I've been wanting to read for years, but I've not wanted to spend a whopping $20 on the hardback version because for some reason there's no cheaper paperback version. Like that doesn't make sense to me because you're just excluding a whole group of people who would pick up your book, but okay, you do you. Before the coffee gets cold, I will not be pronouncing the author's name. It would just be disrespectful. Hello, coffee addict here. If we've not met, hi, I'm Sarah. I am addicted to coffee, to espressos a day keeps the depresso away. So a book centered around coffee I feel was specifically made for me. This book revolves around a coffee shop that allows customers to travel back in time for however long their coffee stays warm. Am I sensing some butterfly effect discussion here? That's one of my favorite phenomenons to explore. This book has been around for a while and I know that there are two more recent spin-off novels, which I did see at Barnes Noble in only hardcover. Clearly I have a gripe, <laughs> but I thought I'd hold off purchasing on those until I read this story. I know what you're thinking. You're like, Sarah, you buy series all the time. Look, I, I do, I do. I try to avoid it when I can though. Killers of a Certain Age by Dina Rayburn. This book sounds so fun and I've heard so many great things, including praises from that friend that I did go to Barnes Noble with. From the synopsis, I'm getting a lot of feminist energy. Love that. Because we follow these 60 year old female assassins who get kicked out of their assassin agency and are now being targeted by the same agency, but these ladies are not having it. They're like, just because our talents are old school doesn't give you the right to fire us, let alone kill us. So they decide to use their experience to turn on that agency to get the job done before they can, if you know what I mean. I also bought The Last Housewife, which is coincidentally the last copy my Barnes & Noble had. This is Ashley Winstead's 2022 release. I have not read In My Dreams, I Hold a Knife. I know that's her really popular one. It is on my mental TBR though. But whereas that book is more of a dark academia thriller, this one's more of a domestic thriller which tend to be my favorite anyway. I love seeing the juxtaposition of mundane suburban life going haywire. Did you hear that crack? <laughs> She's crackly. It looks like we follow Shay as she gets horrifying news of someone she used to be friends with death from her favorite true crime podcast. So she decides to go back to the place she's vowed to never return to search for answers. And she's pulled into a dark seductive world where wealth and privilege shields brutal philosophies that feel all too familiar. So it sounds like there's gonna be some rich people drama in here. A domestic thriller with rich people drama all I could ever want. My most unexpected find was Nine Liars by Maureen Johnson. I was just browsing along and then I had to do like a double take, like, is that, is that Nine Liars? Um, not, it wasn't supposed to come out until tomorrow. I didn't even know about this book until a few months ago when Goodreads very graciously enlightened me. This is the fifth book in the Truly Devious series, but just like the fourth book, it looks like this is more of a standalone novel that you could read without having to read the first three books in the series. I am guessing, I cannot confirm, I have not read the book yet. But in this YA thriller, we follow our girl Stevie during her senior year as she tries to solve a double murder cold case at Cambridge University involving a game of hide and seek that went terribly wrong with only seven survivors and through her investigation she discovers some inconsistencies that just don't add up so she must uncover who of the remaining seven is hiding something that led to the fateful afternoon this series is such a comfort read to me and i thought the series was going to end with just the first three but then maureen johnson gave us a fourth and i was so elated and now she has given us a fifth and i just don't know when this series is going to end but i hope it never does lessons in chemistry by bonnie garmas barnes noble's book of the year everyone who i've heard that has read this has loved it but even without all the hype the concept of the book sounds so fun. We follow Elizabeth Zote, a 1960s chemist who all male colleagues treat her as a doormat. And a few years later, after life throws Elizabeth a curveball her way, she not only ends up a single mother, but also the star of America's most beloved cooking show. And as her following grows, not everyone is happy with her unusual approach in the kitchen that combines cooking and chemistry. Maybe I should get into science fiction more because I really do like reading about science and books, but only to a certain extent. I can only take so much rambling about atoms in the universe before or it starts to feel like I'm reading a textbook. I actually did pick up a science fiction though. The 22 Murders of Madison Bay by Max Berry. To me, this sounds like more of a magical realism story than a science fiction, but it was in the science fiction section of Barnes. Also, quick note, this cover is gorgeous. The yellow and blue. <sighs> It just makes me so happy just looking at it. And it may have been my deciding factor in picking up the book. Look, I know that you've done the same thing at one point in your life as well. Publishers nowadays know what they're doing. 
most of the time. <laughs> I've seen some pretty horrendous covers. This book sounds crazy. We follow our protagonist, Felicity Staples, a New York City journalist who is following a man that keeps jumping timelines, murdering the same woman, Madison May. And while Felicity tries to stop this killer, she learns that she is not the only one hunting him. I'm really excited to see the different lives in each timeline because that encroaches on the butterfly effect. And as we've already established, I am a fiend for the butterfly effect. But poor Madison, she just keeps getting murdered. And like, what did she ever do to this man with super natural powers to deserve this. Oh, I am so excited about this next book. I'm gonna keep saying that because it's true. Something Wilder by Christina Lauren. I have been wanting to read this since it came out, but I have not been wanting to experience the physical pain I would endure by purchasing this $27 novel. That would take me two days to read. Like that just isn't the move. This is one of my most anticipated releases for 2022. This is of course a rom-com that takes place over a treasure hunt in the Red Rock Canyons of Utah. Our male love interest wants nothing more than to reconnect with his first love, who is also the tour guide, Lily. Unfortunately, Lily is all business, but when the trip goes horribly and hilariously wrong, hilariously wrong, um, Christina Lauren, that is a bit presumptuous. I have all my faith in you guys though, so. I'll allow it. It sounds like mayhem ensues as the two must work together in the isolated canyons. Already, all of my Grand Canyon memories are rising. I love the Midwest because the atmosphere is so different from where I currently live. Here, I go outside and I see deer grazing grass. Out west, I go outside and I see rocky cliffs, cacti, and maybe if I'm lucky, a coyote. Or maybe that wouldn't be so lucky. <laughs> Nora Goes Off Script by Annabelle Monaghan. I've heard this book described as a romantic comedy, but it was shelved with the literary fiction books, so I'm guessing it's a bit of both. Would I have bought this if it wasn't for half off? No. But you know, some novels just give off that vibe that you're going to like them, even if you don't really know why. This book gives me that. I've heard not much about this book, but I'm hoping, cross my fingers, that it's a hidden gem. That's what my subconscious is telling me, even though it doesn't have any evidence to back up its hypothesis. It looks like we follow a romance screenwriter whose own marriage collapse prompts her to write the best script of her life. But after filming wraps, our guy who's playing our protagonist, Nora's husband, offers Nora seven grand to stay an extra week, which she can't refuse. Like, if someone's gonna give me seven grand, you would catch me at Barnes & Noble. When Breath Becomes Air by Paul, I will not be pronouncing his last name. I am still on a mission to cause the dam that is my tear ducts to break. Why? Because I just want that connection. So I decided maybe I should venture into some nonfiction territory. Because hear me out. I'm thinking if I know that the story is real and did actually indeed happen, I'm hoping it will cause more of an emotional impact. Some people avoid sad books. I seek them out. Look, yeah, that's something I should probably dissect in therapy, but not here today. From what I've heard about this memoir, it sounds like such a poignant read. This novel is told from the perspective of a neurosurgeon whose job revolves around saving lives when one day he gets diagnosed with stage 5 cancer. So we follow his journey through medical school to becoming a neurosurgeon at Stanford and then finally as he confronts his own morality. Oh my gosh, this sounds so powerful and heartfelt. Very excited. I had to pick up Five Survive, Holly Jackson's new release, who's the same author of the Good Girl's Guide to Murder trilogy. That is such a fun series. Oh my gosh, the third book. <laughs> Got a lot of backlash, which yes, I can see why, but I, as the thriller lover I am, loved that sinister twist the book took. When that twist hit, my jaw hit the floor. It hit the floor. So obviously I know Holly Jackson is capable of great things. This YA thriller follows a group of six friends who are heading to the beach for spring break in their RV, when suddenly a sniper shoots out the RV's wheels, leaving them stranded in the middle of nowhere. And soon it becomes clear that someone is the target and not everyone is going to survive the night. I think we should all read this over spring break, even though our spring breaks probably won't line up. We can just pretend they do and then we can all read the book together. It's the thought that counts. I'm hoping this will fill the void in my heart where the Good Girl's Guide to Murder series used to live. The Weight of Blood by Tiffany D. Jackson. This book is supposedly a Carrie retelling. Have I read Carrie? No. But have I watched the movie? Of course I haven't, no. <laughs> but I've heard this described as even a better version of Carrie. So after reading this, do I need to really read Stephen King's version? That's up to debate. This is a YA thriller that tackles America's history and legacy of racism by following our Carrie character, Mandy, who's a biracial teenager who's been passing for white her whole life. When one morning a rainstorm gets Maddie's hair wet and it is revealed that she is biracial. And when she is outed at her school, she starts to get viciously bullied. But then on prom night, Maddie decides to exact her revenge as she should. I've heard such great things about Tiffany D. Jackson's writing and I can't wait to get into the commentary in here. I have very high hopes. Okay, the last book I got from my first 
Barnes & Noble, was Secluded Cabin Sleep 6 by Lisa Unger. I'm sorry, but what is with that title? I'm gonna be honest with you, I didn't even read the name of this book when I picked it up. I wanted to buy a book this trip that I've heard nothing about, so I saw this book, didn't recognize it, picked it up, read the synopsis, thought it sounded good, and now here we are. But could the author really not come up with something more creative? I mean, the title isn't even grammatically correct. It should be The Secluded Cabin Sleep 6. Let's hope Lisa didn't choose the title, because if so, I'm going to be a little worried for the actual writing inside. The synopsis did pique my interest, so there's that. This is a locked room thriller where we follow three couples over their weekend getaway in a luxurious cabin located in the woods. But this weekend, that was supposed to be filled with lots of R&R &R, turns into a nightmare. As some suspicions arise around the rental, leading our protagonist to question her husband, her best friend, and her brother, who was the one who gifted her this weekend getaway in the first place. I love myself a secluded setting thriller full of tension and hijinks, prime escapism. And then at the second Barnes & Noble, I found another book that I've been wanting to read but have not wanted to pay full price for the hardcover. As you can see, there is a prominent theme going on here. One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose. This book is like really heavy, like what is the paper made out of lead? This thriller is supposed to be filled with rich people drama where the ladies are just dishing out the tea. Yes, ma'am, I'll take one of those Earl Greys, please. We follow Jenny, a hairdresser who caters to the elite upper class. So over the years, she has gotten to know her clients pretty well as they dish out all of the gossip and drama in their lives. They say that friendships can be complex, but no one said it could ever be this deadly. Okay, that's kind of a short synopsis, but I'm getting the vibe that it's best to go into this book with knowing less. But from that short synopsis, this sounds gripping. So happy for you by C. Celia Lasky, I've heard not the best things about, but sometimes if you really want to read something, you just have to read it for yourself and then reassess your life choices afterwards. You'll never know if you really will like or dislike a book until you read it. This cover is gorgeous as well. I've come to realize that if a cover has a bouquet of flowers on it, there's something about it that I just can't resist. I must buy it. Give me a thriller and I'm here, but add a bundle of pretty flowers on the cover and I'm all in. This thriller follows two best friends as one of the friends' wedding approaches, but ominous occurrences leads the bride to second guess her decision and everyone in the bridal parties, including her best friends, true intentions. I am a bit hesitant from all the negative reviews I've heard, but if I don't end up liking it, okay, I was going to say it seems pretty short, but it's actually like 300 pages, so that's kind of a normal length novel. Like, yeah, I might waste five or six hours reading this book, but what would I have done with that time otherwise? Probably waste it on TikTok or something, I don't know. So during my second day of my book shopping extravaganza, this was the other day when I went with my friends, first we got coffee, which was delicious. I had Pete's for the first time. But then while we were at Barnes, both of us decided to pick a book for the other to buy and then read. Can you guys guess which book I chose for her? It's one of my favorite books, so it probably won't come as too much of a surprise, but still, it might not have been your first guess. I chose my fave TJR book, Malibu Rising. Love that book so much. I chose it because I know she reads a lot of historical fiction, and since that's technically a historical fiction, I thought she would probably enjoy it. But she chose for me The Stationary Shop by Marhan Kamale, which I have already read and have really enjoyed, but I'll talk more about my thoughts at the end of the month in my wrap-up. This is a historical fiction novel, which is a genre I don't typically read too often. It's actually kind of funny. She and my mom have really similar book taste. It's actually kind of scary if I think too much about it. But in this book, we follow Roya in 1953 Tehran and to temporarily escape the ongoing political upheaval, she finds comfort in the local stationery shop where one evening she is introduced to Bahaman and quickly their cute little relationship blossoms. A few months later on the day of their marriage, the happy couple agrees to meet in the town square. But when violence erupts, Bahaman never shows and Roya is unable to find or contact him, and for the next 60 years, questions around her fiancé's disappearance haunts Roya until fate leads them to reunite. Man, there were so many things I liked about this book, so I can't wait to dive into those and discuss them with you, so stay tuned, stay tuned. In the meantime, I'm going to hand this book off to my mom to read. Next, I also picked up another book she thought I would like, The Dinner by Herman Nock. I wasn't exactly planning on buying this, but then after she told me about it and I read on the back that the Wall Street Journal described this as a psychological thriller, I was sold. I didn't even read the synopsis. All I know is that this book book takes place over one dinner. I have been trying to come up with a better justification for this purchase, but I don't have one other than that the book spoke to me. Like, I'm not sure if this is a family dinner or a corporate dinner, but sometimes you just have to make purchases based off of vibe alone. And then lastly, I picked up Matthew Perry's new memoir, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. I was showing my books I got to my parents. You know, I gotta give them a book haul as well. And they had the audacity to ask me why I got Matthew Perry's memoir. Like, hello, I have no idea why they asked me that. I know they have seen Friends. Never Nevertheless, I now have his memoir. Even if one doesn't particularly know the author, there, of course, is still merit in reading their memoir. But personally, I really enjoyed reading memoirs from people I am already familiar with. It's so interesting comparing your thoughts from an outsider's perspective to their actual personal account of their life. The first line of this memoir is, Hi, my name is... 
Stella, are you okay? Hi, my name is Matthew, although you may know me by another name. My friends call me Maddie, and I should be dead. That is definitely an impactful opening, but I believe in this novel we not only follow his acting career on one of, if not the most successful sitcoms, but also his journey and personal struggle with addiction. I always appreciate a shorter memoir or a memoir with short chapters, because I find that those aspects make the book more compelling and easier to read. I'm not typically a big book fan, especially when it comes to nonfiction. Okay, here are all the books I bought. There's more. Which is kind of crazy. But you know, new year, new books. The TBR needs replenishing every now and then. I will have to haul all of these back to my apartment this weekend, which will not be fun, but it's worth it though. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love it if you gave it a thumbs up. It really does help me and my channel out a lot. You can also comment, interact, subscribe, all that fun YouTube stuff. I'd really appreciate it. Let me know your thoughts on any of these books or maybe some of your recent bookish purchases. I hope you all are having a fantastic day and I will see you in the next one. Bye.